This video provides an overview on how to use the Palo Alto firewall like a switch and provide connectivity out to the internet. I've already configured the firewall so I'll show you how I did it after going through the diagram on how I've set it all up. So looking at the diagram starting at the top, we have a laptop connected to a layer 2 interface on the Palo Alto firewall and it's in the same subnet as these imaginary servers on the right hand side that don't really exist. I've just put these servers in there just to show you an example of when you want to plug a device into the firewall which is in the same subnet as other devices. But by going through the firewall, the firewall is able to see everything so good from a monitoring and policy enforcement perspective. Another situation where you would plug clients or servers directly into the firewall is for example if you have a very small office let's say three desktops you can just plug them directly into the firewall rather than buying a separate switch so as well as a layer 2 interface for both the laptop and the switch we need a layer 2 VLAN for them to be able to connect to each other so I've added a layer 2 VLAN here as well the Layer 2 port Ethernet 1 slash 7 is connected to the Layer 2 VLAN and here if we had a port, I've called it Ethernet 1 slash 5 for example, it would also be connected to this Layer 2 VLAN as well so they can talk to each other as just described. However to give the laptop and the servers routing capability, the Layer 2 VLAN is mapped to a Layer 3 VLAN to give it the ability to route out to the internet or any other subnets we create in the future and the layer 3 VLAN is part of the virtual router that gives it its capability to do the routing. So now I've also configured the firewall to dish out DHCP addresses to our client so I've assigned the layer 3 VLAN with DHCP server capabilities so to provide the DHCP configuration directly to the layer 3 VLAN itself. Just to mention again, the Layer 2 switch and the servers are there just as an example and do not really exist. We're not doing anything with them within the configuration. It was just to describe if you wanted Layer 2 switching between devices going through the firewall. Now looking at the other side of the firewall, Ethernet 1 slash 8. This is a Layer 3 interface which connects to my home router. And to have the laptop route out to the internet we have two options. We can either do source outbound NAT so that my home router knows how to get the connection back to the firewall or we can apply a static route back to the 10.10.10.0 network where the laptop is connected. But to avoid making any changes to the home router I've decided to configure a NAT rule on the firewall itself. I'll go through the configuration of how all of this was configured on the Palo Alto firewall next and I will show you some of the monitors so we can see the configuration works. And on the right hand side in the middle these are the different tasks needed to build this topology on the firewall so we will have a look at each of these tasks and how it was done. The first one is to configure the layer 2 interface itself, uh, the second one is to map it to a VLAN it should say number three there, I've got number two twice there, but the third one, or 2B, is to configure the Lay 3 VLAN. We don't need to do any specific mapping. The Lay 2 and Lay 3 VLAN map, uh, you will see it in the interface, they map within the GUI interface itself. So we do the mapping, but it's done within the GUI. And then number three is to configure the zones. Number four, we will configure the outbound NAT. So the source translation is done using the external interface of the firewall. Then we will verify the virtual router and we will have a look at the static default route configured on the virtual router. Next we will configure the DHCP server configuration or have a look at it, have a look at how it was configured. And finally we will do some ping tests and we will have a look at the DHCP monitor to make sure it's uh, leasing out DHCP addresses to my client. Right, so let's move on and have a look at the Palo Alto firewall GUI. So the best place to start will be network and interfaces. We'll have a look at the physical interfaces first. So we can see two physical interfaces configured at the bottom. Ethernet 1.7 which is configured as a Layer 2 interface and assigned to local network L2 VLAN and is part of the Trust Layer 2 zone. We've also got Ethernet 1.8 which is my external facing internet facing interface which is a Layer 3 interface. So it has an IP address called internet and 
Yep, it's a layer 3 interface connected to a layer 3 zone called Untrust. And I've attached a management profile to it as I'm managing the firewall from this interface. Let's move on to zones. So here we have three zones. We have a layer 2 zone connected to the layer 2 interface, Ethernet 1 slash 7. Then we have a layer 3 zone connected to our layer 3 VLAN, VLAN 10. And another layer 3 zone connected to our layer 3 internet facing interface, Ethernet 1 slash 8. Now if we go to VLANs, here is our layer 2 VLAN and it's mapped to the layer 2 interface Ethernet 1 slash 7 and the layer 3 VLAN interface VLAN.10. So this is the layer 2 part. Next let's have a look at the interface VLAN, layer 3 VLAN which is under interfaces. And this is a layer 2 VLAN just like a Cisco switch layer 2 VLAN which maps to the interface which is here and then under interfaces VLAN this is like our interface VLAN on a Cisco switch which provides layer 3 capabilities so the top one is the default VLAN already created out of the box but I've created a layer 3 VLAN here VLAN.10 so it's got an IP address because it's layer 3 and I've called it LAN the IP address which is basically the 10.10.10.1 IP address from the diagram and it's been mapped to our LA2 VLAN local network L2. It's part of the trust zone and finally it's got a DHCP feature assigned to it here so we can assign DHCP addresses to any systems connected to this network. Next let's have a look at the DHCP server configuration and let's click on VLAN.10 so what we can see here is our DHCP server it leases out addresses in the range of 10.10.10.2 .10 to 10.10.10.10 it's assigned to interface VLAN 10 here so that's the layer 3 interface and if we go to options we can see further DHCP configuration settings in here so we can see the gateway is our layer 3 VLAN 10.10.10.1 we can see the subnet mask a slash 24 assigned to the client and we can also see a couple of public DNS servers here as well but you have all of these other options here as well if we go back to lease we've also got the timeout as well period which I've uh, set up for one day but you can uh, set that up as uh, required so let's cancel out of DHCP server configuration. Next let's have a look at NAT which is in the policy section so if we click on policies here we come to the NAT section and here we have our NAT rule so we've named it Internet NAT I've given it a tag of Internet NAT the source zone is trust the destination zone is untrust we don't care about any of these because we're just doing a simple outbound source NAT based on dynamic IP import and it will translate the source address to the outgoing interface which is Ethernet slash 18 here and we can see some hit counts on this uh, NAT rule because I've already tested it and the last piece we need to have a look at is within network and virtual routers here so we're having a look at the virtual router we can see the layer 3 interfaces in here Ethernet 1 slash 8 and VLAN.10. If we go into our default router and we go to if we go to static routes, we can see our default static route is bound to Ethernet 1 slash 8. And the next hop is my home router 192.168.0.1 here. Finally, if we go to the interface tab here and we go back to Ethernet here and have a look at our physical interfaces if we click on refresh here we can see Ethernet 1 Ethernet 1 slash 7 is red because nothing is connected to it so what I will do is turn on my test laptop and uh, we will wait for this to go green let's try again
hopefully right great stuff so we've got a green so it's uh, the laptop is uh, connected so before we go to traffic logs let's have a look at DHCP here and um, let's have a look at the allocation of IP pools we can see if it's allocated any IP addresses and if we can see the top one here 10.10.10.3 .10 it's allocated it to my test laptop here so that's a, a good sign and if we now go to monitor and go to the traffic logs I've already got it uh, configured correctly with ping we can do a, a ping test so if I go to my test laptop now I'll do a ping to 4.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2. And that looks good so we can ping 4.2.2.2 and it resolves and that's pretty much it for this video so that's how you set up a firewall as a lay to switch and give it access out to the internet thanks for watching